in that particular study, we were um, trying to understand how melphalan impacts the myeloma cells. Uh, melphalan is a treatment that has been used widely, and we know that it's a very effective treatment in multiple myeloma, but we always, because it's an alkylating agent, we always uh, question ourselves whether uh, it actually um, adds some additional damage to the myeloma cells. And to address this question, um, we actually uh, used samples collected from a phase three clinical trial where uh, in one arm patients only treated with uh, eight cycles of RVD and on the other arm patients treated with, with RVD three cycles, then they get high dose methyl and then uh, there were uh, two cycles of additional RVD. So that gives us an opportunity to compare the two arms uh, in terms of uh, the genomic sequences and um, identify if melphalan is um, causing or selecting a clone with a uh, high mutational burden. So when we look at this study results, we found that uh, patients who are treated with melphalan uh, accumulates uh, roughly 10,000 more mutations around uh, five years from diagnosis. And this is um, almost uh, 2.5 fold more than um, the patients who are only treated with RVD. Uh, we did not see any specific large scale um, alterations like uh, structural variants or copy number changes in the same population. So. It was mainly um, it was mainly the point mutations, and when we look at the uh, cancer cell fraction of these mutations, we found that most of the mutations are in the uh, subclonal population, which uh, we uh, which we assume that it's also increasing uh, the clonal uh, heterogeneity uh, after the melphalan treatment. Uh, when we look at the Patterns in these mutations, we identify two potential melphalan signatures uh, or alkylating agent uh, signatures in myeloma patients. And interestingly, uh, patients who are treated with high dose melphalan and achieved uh, a better response actually uh, showing the evidence of these two unique signatures more strongly compared to other patients. Uh, when we look at the mutational load, uh, patients who achieved better response actually uh, showed more uh, um, uh, mutational burden at the time of relapse, whereas the patients who did not achieve CR showed uh, similar patterns to RVD-only treated patients. So um, we, we, we think that uh, either by induction or by selection the melphal, after the melphalan treatment, there is obviously uh, more mutational load at the time of uh, relapse. Uh, but, uh, but the key question still remains, uh, we know that melphalan is an effective treatment, very helpful um, in most cases, it's still widely used. Um, and the key, key question still remains, which is where our uh, further studies is now focusing on, uh, whether this increased mutation load causing any um, clinical disadvantage or uh, it's just a, a selection of clone and um, there is basically no uh, like downstream uh, clinical implications. Um, that's where we are uh, looking at it right now.